Okay, what I'm going to do in this video, I'm afraid it's going to be pretty long because I, I want to cover a lot of information in this one video because it all kind of goes together. I, I don't know how to break it up. But what I'm going to do is, is give you an introductory look at basic utility theory today. And what I want to do is, is start by talking about what we call budget lines. What we're trying to do here is try to give an idea about how we can model how people make decisions. Whenever it comes to, okay, I've got some money, I go to the store and I see some prices, uh, what's the best way for me to spend my money? So what we're looking at here is the decision of a consumer about how to maximize their happiness. And when we talk about happiness, we talk about utility. Now utility is a, a word, a term that was invented back in the 1800s by some economists who were trying to come up with a way to describe what people try to do whenever they go out and buy things. And back in the 1800s, people were thinking about not happiness so much as usefulness. And that's where this word utility comes from. Some, something has utility if it's useful. But now we just think about satisfaction or happiness. So utility theory is examining people's happiness and how people respond to constraints. Remember that economics is, is the science of making choices in the face of scarcity. So how do you make choices in the face of scarcity when you, you have money, say, and you're trying to spend it? Now before we get into looking at utility or happiness itself, let's look at the constraints upon your happiness first. Now there are a lot of ways to think about constraints on your happiness, but in this example what we're going to be doing is looking at the situation where you have a budget and you want to spend that, that money on some products. Now, in an economics course, usually you are exposed to the idea of a production possibilities frontier. So let's start with that idea briefly here. In a production possibilities frontier, usually you are thinking about two goods uh, that you might be able to produce. And you're thinking about what kind of possibilities are there for your production. And so in today's example, we're going to stick with um, beer and pretzels. So let's let's just stick with that. Now, let me, so that things are on the same axes, let me um, look down here. Okay, let's, let's keep uh, beer on the, the y-axis. So just suppose you could either produce beer in the production possibilities uh, context, or you could spend your time producing pretzels. Now normally when you're talking about a, cons a, a production possibilities frontier, you think about them being bowed out from the origin. And a frontier means a boundary. So with a production possibilities frontier, what you're doing is you, you draw a line that is a boundary between things that are possible in here, things that are pos combinations of beer and pretzels that are possible to produce, and things that are unattainable or impossible out here. And this curved line is the boundary between what you can produce on the inside and what you can't produce on the outside. Now, that's if you're actually producing things. This, this line is bowed out from the origin because of specialized productive resources, etc. We're not going to be looking at producing pretzels, so let me get rid of all this here. We're not going to be producing beer and pretzels, we're going to be consuming beer and pretzels. So with utility theory, instead of a production possibilities frontier, what we're going to be looking at, some we might call a consumption possibilities frontier. So consumption possibilities. So what does consumption possibilities mean? And of course I apologize for my horrible handwriting, but it is what it is. Um, consumption possibilities, basically what we're talking about is answering the question, what could you afford? 
what can you buy? Well, that's, that's what your consumption possibilities are. Now, if we're going to talk about consumption possibilities, we need to know two things. First, we need to know how much money do you have to spend, and we call that a budget. And we need to also know prices of the two goods. So let's, let's look at a situation. Suppose, and this will be our situation we start off analyzing today, suppose you have $10 is your budget, and the price of pretzels, PP, they're $2 each, and the price of beer is also $2 each to start with. Let's draw our consumption possibilities. Well, here's, here's a way you can draw your consumption possibilities. Let's, let's start just by thinking about beer over here. Um, how many beers could you buy if you spent all of your money on beer in this yellow situation here? Well, you have $10, and the price of beers are $2 each. If you spent all your money on that, mathematically, you take the $10 and divide it by $2, that gives you 5. So if we wanted to buy nothing but beer, we could buy 5 beers. So let's mark it off here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 beers. Alright, and we could buy that, that many. Let's mark off the axis here. Okay. Oh, by the way, uh, before I get too far, if you want this handout that I'll be working with uh, down below here, go to my website, uh, www.berkeyacademy.com. Click over on the left side of the page uh, under Files and download the file. I'm calling it uh, Utility Theory Basic. It's a PDF. So download that, print it out, and that'll help you with this um, with this exercise to, to learn it a little better. Um, so to get back to what we were talking about, if you had ten dollars and you spent it all on beer, you could buy five here. So let me let me make that a little bit easier to read in red. Okay. Um, now let's look at the other another point on the other end. Well, suppose I spent all my money on pretzels here. How many pretzels could I buy if I had ten dollars? And I just bought all pretzels at two dollars each. Well, I could buy five of those. So let's mark that off. One, two, three, four, five here. Okay. So let's draw. Let's just connect those two points. And why we're doing that will become evident in a minute, I hope. Okay. We connected those two points. This is what we call a budget line, or we could also use this term that we used before, consumption possibilities frontier. Now why? Well, because this line outlines all the possibilities, lists all the possibilities of numbers of beer and pretzels that we could buy. Let's, look, let's go through all those possibilities for this first one to make sure that you really see what we're doing here. So we could buy five beers up here and zero pretzels. Or what if we only bought four beers? Let's go down to four beers. How many pretzels could we buy then? Well, we could buy one. Four beers and one pretzel because they cost the same amount. They're both two dollars each here. Every time we give up one beer, four to three, we can buy another pretzel. Three to two, we can buy another pretzel. 2 to 1, we can buy another pretzel. So these are little red dots here are all the combinations of beers and pretzels. And in some circumstances, maybe we could buy halves of things, right? So it might be possible in some cases to buy uh, three and a half beers and one and a half pretzels. Now, sometimes that might not be possible. So this is what we call our budget line or our consumption possibilities frontier. Budget line is the more common term that you hear for this. Let's do one more budget line uh, so that we can see what changes. Let's do, let's do two more real quickly. Um, and this will save us time later anyway. Uh, let's look at two different changes of what could happen with a budget line. So uh, next, let's, let's keep the situation the same except in this next situation, I'm going to give you $12 as your budget. And let's keep the prices the same. $2 for pretzels, $2 for beers. Let's draw our new budget line, our consumption possibilities frontier. Um, if 
we spent all our money on beer, we could afford six. If we spent all our money on pretzels, we could afford six. And if we connect the dots there, this is our new consumption possibilities line. It's blue now. What happened? Well, the slope stayed the same as the yellow line because the prices are the same, but it shifted out, meaning we have now more consumption possibilities than we used to because we have more money. Well, that kind of makes sense. Now, again, this is, this is kind of a consumption possibilities frontier because look at the blue line. Now, what what is possible is anything on the inside of the blue line, any of these combinations we could buy. Anything on the outside, we can't buy. Yeah, that's not possibility. So th that line is uh, the frontier between what's possible and what's not possible. Here's the lesson. Let's, let's look at the slope of each of these two budget lines. And you'll see that the slope is 1 for the blue line, and the slope is also 1 for the yellow line. Now, how can we tell the slope? Well, it's rise over run. And you can you can get this slope two ways. First is just look at any two points, say this point right here, and this point on this end down here. Between those two points, the rise over run is 6, you know, down 6, negative 6, and the run is over 6. So down 6, over 6, that slope is minus 1. Now, we can also get this slope a different way. We can also, here's a shortcut um, way to get the, the slope that's useful in a lot of situations, and that's to look at the price of what's on the x-axis, price of what's on the x-axis, in this case that's the beer, oh sorry, pretzels, divided by the price of beer. The slope is like negative that because it's always going to be a negative slope there. Uh, and in this case, that would be 2 over 2, which gives us a slope of 1. That's another way to look at the uh, slope of the budget line. Why do we care about the slope of the budget line? Well, it tells us about the opportunity cost between the two goods. Uh, if the slope is 1, that tells us they're the same price. So every time you give up one unit of a beer, you can get one pretzel. 1 for 1 is what that slope of minus 1 tells us. Now let's change things up a bit here. Let's change the prices now instead of just changing the income. Let's see, we'll go with a dark green here. Let's suppose that the price of pretzels went down. Let's go back to our original situation where our budget's $10. The price of pretzels, let's have a sale on pretzels. Prices of pretzels is only a dollar. Price of beer is $2. Okay, let's draw our budget line. Now if we spent all of our money on pretzels with ten dollars, and pretzels are a dollar each, how many could we afford? Well now we could afford ten. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's one end of our budget line. And the other end of our budget line, we can just say uh, price of ears are two dollars. We have ten dollars. Well we could afford five just like we used to. All right, well, this is getting kind of a, a long line. Let me see if I can do a straight job freehand trying to connect those points here. All right, let's see. I'll just do a quick, yeah, that's not quite straight, but you can, you can get the idea here of what happens. The budget line does two things. It gets flatter here. Now the slope is one half whereas the slope here was 1, uh, how can we tell that? Well, it's rise over run, 5 over 10 is 1 half, minus 1 half technically, um, or the ratio of the prices. Now when you do the ratio of the prices, it's the price on the x-axis divided by the price on the y-axis, so that's 1 half right there, 1 over 2. So that's another way to say that, see that that slope is 1 half. Now again, what does that mean? Well, in this case, what that means is um, that if we had five beers, if we give up one beer and go to four beers, we can get two pretzels in exchange. So down one over two, down one over two, down one over two. 
it tells us about the relative opportunity cost of these two products. Now let's do one more real quickly and I was going to make one really long video but I think I'll end this video uh, after looking at the budget lines and then we'll go down and we'll, we'll look at this um, exercise looking at utility in a utility table. It'll go it'll go more quickly then. I don't want to make the video too long. But let's look at one more budget line here. Uh, one more case. Uh, suppose we had one more case where we had um, still going to keep a budget of 10, but what if I was at a place that had free pretzels? So the price of pretzels are zero, and the um, price of beers are still two. What's our budget line going to look like? Well, if we start up here again, what if we spent all our money on the $2 beers? We could buy five. But then, what's the slope of this budget line going to be? Well, if you use this ratio of the prices trick, 0 over 2 is 0. Huh, what does that mean? Well, here's what that means. It means that um, if you give up a beer, how many pretzels could you buy? Well, wait a minute. Pretzels are free. Even if we don't give up any beer, we could have five beers and no pretzels, or five beers and one pretzel, five beers and two pretzels. We don't have to give up beer to get more pretzels our budget line is going to be perfectly flat here. Um, the slope of zero says that the opportunity cost of eating pretzels is no beers. For the green line, each pretzel, pretzel we have to give up a half of a beer. For the yellow line, for each pretzel we have to give up one beer. So as the line gets steeper, the amount of beers you have to give up to get a pretzel is going to go up and up. Now we could go the other way too. Uh, what if the price of pretzels went up to uh, you know five dollars each? Then you can tell well if the price of beer is still two we could afford five. If the price of pretzels are five dollars each now we could only afford two so that would make this line steeper something like this pink line here. So I'm going to end this little talk about um, budget lines here. Go to BerkeyAcademy.com and download this utility table um, down here. Again, go to BerkeyAcademy.com, click Files, and look for the PDF called uh, Utility Theory Basics.pdf, uh, and then come back for the second part of this video.